Alright, so this is going to be a demo of the software that I wrote for realistically controlling electric trains. It's called Zephyr Cab and it gives the model trains the same controls as the real ones, or that's the goal. It is mostly working. There are some features missing right now that I'm working on, but today was a huge milestone. I got the brakes mostly working. So, I'm going to do a quick demo. Um, I've already put a ton of information into the computer, like it's saved in a file. You don't have to put it in every time, you just put it in once and leave it. So the computer knows the weight of the FT and the horsepower and a ton of other specifications. And it also knows that there are three boxcars, each weighing 200,000 pounds, I think. <clears throat> So it knows all of the necessary things to do physics correctly. So I'm going to start the engine. And this is with a lock sound decoder. Lock sound select. So I'm going to put the... Well, first I'll do a demo of the manual notching. This is a feature that's exclusive to lock sound decoders where you can adjust the throttle the mode the prime mover notch independent of the actual speed of the model and I've put that into my software so that if you put the reverser in neutral and you rev it up it revs up but it doesn't go anywhere so that's a really cool realistic feature other decoders other brands other than ESU I think have this feature but I personally have had really good experience with ESU so guess I would recommend lock sound um, so I'll put it back down in idle uh, put the reverser in forward and you can see obviously the horn and the bell work um, pretty much the only things that don't work on this screen are the dynamic brake and the independent brake the dynamic brake, I'm not sure if I'm going to bother with at all. The independent brake is in the process of being implemented and is definitely going to work. It just doesn't work yet. So, I'm going to be focusing on the throttle and the automatic brake, which is the brake on all of the cars for the whole train. So, I'm going to put this up in some throttle. And notice it starts moving very slowly. Um, I've actually done speed tests with a scale speedometer with this so that I know what throttle position, like what number of DCC speed steps corresponds to what scale miles per hour speed. So that's how I'm able to get accurate speed control. I'll rev it up some more. You can see, like a real train, it starts off very, very slow. Right now we're going about 8 miles an hour. And I'll put it up a little further. 10 miles an hour. So I'm going to let it speed up a little more and circle around the layout a little further. And then when it gets back around to the bottom again, we'll use the automatic brake and stop it. This is a little unrealistic because, um, I apologize for the dirty track, but the software has no way of knowing that the train is on a hill, so it doesn't take grade into account. If you had a layout with block detection, you could theoretically add that feature, and I'm open to adding that. My layout just doesn't have block detection. So, so now I'm going to put it back down in idle. And we'll go ahead and apply the brakes. So when you apply the brakes, drag it over into service and tell it how many pounds you want. I'm going to do 10. And so now I'll put it in idle. And it may stop on the hill, so I'll drag it over here so you guys can see it stop. 
but it is going to stop very, very slowly. This is another reason that I prefer lock sound decoders. Their motor control is fantastic, so you can get really good, accurate scale speed, especially on the low end of things, without, um, without a lot of jerking and stuttering. So, because this is actually a Bachmann, a cheap Bachmann F unit model, and just has a lock sound decoder in it, and it makes a world of difference. So, now the brakes are finished applying. Um, you can see our equalizing reservoir for the train has gone down to 80 psi since we made a 10 psi reduction. Um, so, we could make a further reduction by dragging it over here if we wanted, or we could release it. Um, I'm going to release it. If you listen, when you release it, the software is smart enough to trigger an air release noise on the decoder. So, I'm going to, when you let up on the, when you let up on your mouse with this slider, it kind of applies the action that you're doing. So, I'm going to let up. And you can see it releases all the brakes on all the cars in a prototypical timing because it takes a little bit for the signal to travel down the brake pipe on the train. So that's replicated. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we'll just do one more quick demo, put it in reverse, and rev it up a little bit. I'll let you guys see the scale speed motor control on this. We're going about two and a half miles an hour right now. And then I'll rev it up a little more. That's notch two. It'll go all the way to notch eight, but it takes a while to get it up there and get going fast, so. And now I'll uh, apply the brakes. And I'll do a 15 PSI reduction this time, stop it a little faster. All the brakes are applying. And if you watch the speedometer, sure enough, we are slowing down rapidly. And now we've stopped. So I put it in idle. And I guess that's about it. I plan to finish up the independent brake, which is the locomotives only, very soon. And put some finishing touches on some things. Um... If you'd like to test this software, this works on any layout that has JMRI. So it doesn't matter if you have a Digitrax DCC system or NCE or MRC or whoever, as long as you have a JMRI computer, which in this case is this computer right here, then any computer on the same network as your JMRI computer, so the same Wi-Fi network or Ethernet connection or whatever, can connect to your layout and control it. So, if you'd like to test this out, just comment or something, I guess. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it.